Hey there everyone, this is Life, welcome back to my playthrough of Veteran Odyssey 3. Today we are going to do a little bit of the sea, because I've been kind of neglecting it. Regrettedly so, so let's just uh, stop by the airport and get some sea stuff done. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to touch down on all the spots. We should be able to reach the rest of the entirety of the sea. And we should be able to pick up everything. Uh, this is going to be quite the experience. I haven't done any of the sea quests beyond a few, so let's see if we can do a few of these first, and maybe then we can move on to some... something else. We got Tower of Victory, Trade, City, Dark Forest, and Ruins of the Giant. I know I haven't done these. Maybe I have? Maybe I haven't done. I don't think I've done Tortuga Island or Marine City. I don't think I've gotten past Aya to hire port, but, uh, set sail. Let's see. Got four spots now, too. Okay, there's a few places we still need to go. There's a Tanyan available in the Southern Ocean I should probably get. Though we're not itching for money, so maybe not. We have the Tower of Victory. We don't have the town in the A1-A2. We don't have the... We don't have this town in A2 over here. Um, and there's just several locations we haven't been yet. Let's see. Salted Meat's our best one. We may as well stick with it. It's been so long, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> don't know where to go. Let's see. I think I need to get to this fourth checkpoint first. Let's see if I can remember how to get there. I'm pretty sure we can use some Latin Sail shenanigans to get up that way. Let's take the same route. We'll use the, uh, lighthouse to offset the movement by one, uh, one tile so that we can get through the west side. Avoid getting hit by that. And then go north. I don't think the pirate will get in our way. Nah, he didn't. Alright, so he, he had no chance of getting in our way. Uh, around here is when the map gets a little tricky to map because the two uh, sides merge together. Looks like that only goes for two spaces, but I can't be sure. This is here. This is three long. I can't map three long. I know for sure that these two spaces are just green spots. I can't really tell if there's anything behind it, and it's just rather hard to tell, really. There's- if the- it- this had EO4's, uh, B-Circle pad movement, that would be helpful, but it doesn't. Okay, slightly blockaded by this, uh, wall here, so to say. Looks like this one up for another two spaces. Curves this way. These look green. It's really hard to tell. Also, I am mapping this wrong. I don't know why I thought there was a space in front of me that was green. Or why that went on two spaces. It doesn't. Alright, so. I can tell that there's a current in front of me. And at least one water space in front of me. There is a island here with pads on it. This spins north and goes that way, and has yellow flowers lining it. It looks like this goes off by itself, but I can't tell from here. You don't really have a choice but to enter the currents. We should find the fourth pole around here. See, which way do I want to move from here? Right? Ah, here it is. Oh, but we gotta offset our movement again. We should be able to barely make this. Let's see, off of the peninsula here that we can see is a whirlpool. And those whirlpools go diagonally up and to the right for an undisclosed amount of time until it reaches this island, it seems. This island wraps around the spot like this. Has yellow flowers here in the corner. Over there, and maybe in the corner here. 
Okay, so we need to find a way to offset our movement to go one to the right or one to the left. Actually, we need to do a vertical displacement. Let's see. It doesn't seem to be an easy way to do that. We might miss this oceanic pole. Because I can't find a vertical displacement. Um, there's gotta be a vertical displacement somewhere. We may have to do the vertical displacement before we reach this, but no, that wouldn't help because we're gonna go through these currents. So we need to find a vertical displacement after these currents. Hmm. Puzzle solving with life, Rick. Um. Oof. Okay. We can't go that way. We can go to the left. That would horizontally displace us, but not vertically. There's no easy way to vertical. Ah. Oh. I see how we're supposed to vertically do it. There's this island here, so if we went north, we would have bumped into it and be able to turn right away. But sadly, that is not the fate I took. The path. Fates. Same thing. This ends here. Sadly, there's not much we can do in this position, though, so... That ends this voyage, but now we know how to get there for sure, so we just do the same thing. We don't need these. Alright. Do I need to go left from here in order to reach that spot? No, I can just go straight, straight on ahead and bump into the uh, island, so... There we go. That's how you uh, get to this pole, which is vitally necessary. These are all green spaces. And we can get a bit of the currents around here. Uh, the Elder Dragon's Lair is up ahead of us, but uh, no easy way to get to it from here right now. Let's, let's go Salted Meat and see if we can't get in from the other side. Yes, we saw an island in the sky. Castle in the sky. No, we have not seen a Mirage. Would never let your doubts hold us back, Mr. Sailor Guy. Yeah. Let's just do that. I don't think we need a... I just went from Arm Road. Well, this isn't pointless, but it was pointless, so... Derp. Fourth foot hole. Okay, now we should... Uh, now I'm going to swing by around the left side. We should be able to sneak around Captain FOE here. I know he's here. He showed his face not 10 seconds ago. Oh, there's an island on this one. Cool. Alright, let's check you out. So what of a man. Learned that he hunts fish used to make garm, a type of condiment. Tells you to wait, then... Alright, we need Garm in order to get an item somewhere else, I do believe. I believe I even marked it on my map from an earlier expedition. It should be around here. Yeah, we need Garm over there. So, we'll, we'll attend to that later. Alright, we need to use these currents to dodge an FOE. Say an FOE, I mean an enemy ship. Where is that enemy ship? Anyway, we need this to get around him. There he is. Now, this should be on course to do this. There we go. Swiftly dodged him. I believe we need to do that, otherwise we won't have enough turns to make it in, but it looks like I might not have enough turns even with that. I'm seeing conflicting currents here. This seems to go down all the way to that point. And these seem to go down here, but don't actually do anything. There's a whirlpool around the corner somewhere-ish. Whirlpool here. Okay, that's our entrance. We found the entrance to it.
Maybe I need a foremast? I think the foremast is too fast. I can't be sure though. Anyways, this goes down. I don't think we have enough turns, not unless the currents take us directly there. Yeah, we don't have enough turns to do this, I don't think. Oh, maybe? No, the currents would have to deposit us directly in front of it, and they don't. Usually directly up into a whirlpool. Alright, so we found the entrance. We just don't have quite enough turns to make it with uh, just what we have now. Actually, if we went in with the foremast, we wouldn't be able to get here because we need one movement in order to not run into a whirlpool. So, you have to get here without the foremast or the Latin sail. That being said, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to get any closer than this. We are literally one movement off of uh, getting here. Is it possible to do this 24 movement? Should I try? I think we go deliver the Garm first, and then we'll see uh, what we can do. Good spirits to travel the seas, spot, yes, yes, yes. A Calho. Alright, we got the Balcahau. Don't need to do anything else here. Let's see what this Balcahau does. It's a 20 turn 40 in, so it's cheaper than the Jin Yu, but it's not as good as salted meat. That's fine. Um, should I Latin sail from. Okay, let's do this. Let's Latin sail from the fourth foothold with this new food and see how far we can get. We should be able to travel quite the distance. Let's see, this goes to... Uh, I don't know, the speed of this thing makes it hard to control. We need to move two spaces as an additional tool we want, so... If I'm counting this right, yeah, we'd run straight into a whirlpool first chance. Yeah, it doesn't look like we get a smooth entrance to the, uh, to where I want to go. There's probably a way to do it, but I'm not seeing it. Well, regardless, I found a way out. Kind of. No, I found a way out. Alright, we dodged this whirlpool here. I don't know why it's here, what it's doing here, or anything. We got some seaweed to our east here. Which is fair enough. It's going off to the west, so it's fine. Uh, we've reached the northern hemisphere of the map. Ah, uh, I need the uh, naval ram in order to reach where we need to go. For shame. That being said, at least I know how to get here now, so... Uh, yeah, yep. We will get there ASAP. Mr. Sir, we need the naval ram in order to reach it. And fourth foothold. Let me see if I remember my movements. I believe I went... Left, then up, then left, then down. And right. And up, and right. And up, then right. Ah, uh, postcom. So, here's the deal. I changed to a 24 movement thing, and am able to reach AAEA. Uh, we're doing a little bit of post-commentary because I created the episode during a time where it was busy around the house, so I didn't want to uh, complicate anything, so I just kind of kept quiet and decided to re-record my audio later. That's why you hear my voice now. We arrive at AAEA, a soldier that you can use in one of the sea quest appears and tells you all about Scylla, but uh, more on Scylla later, she's going to be 
a sea boss that we fight at another time. We're going to be fighting quite a few sea bosses this episode, actually, at the end. Uh, of course, me from the future is very, very smart and has already designed the episode, so... That's it, so... We get notified about how AEAA is important. I call it AEAA. There's probably a simplified pronunciation of it. I just love calling it AEAA, because it's just like three A's and two E's. Uh, we get a cannon. This cannon is very important. It allows us to get to Ugarit without any problems. Uh, there's only two spa uh, places we still need to go, and that is A, Ugarit, and B, uh, the floating castle. Uh, but we need to get to Ugarit in order to get the item for the food that we need to get to uh, the island. So these next few minutes is going to be me getting the grenade and going to Ugarit, uh, ignoring an island along the way because I'm dumb, but more on that, and you can watch that as we go. The end of this episode is a... Wow, you can hear me snap my fingers. Um, the end of this episode is a miniature faux rush-ish of the sea quest bosses, and I wanted to kind of talk about them now before the rush goes on. Uh, it's a condensed section that used to be 27 minutes. I crunched it down into about 7, and there's music. Very familiar music. And it's two different songs, but uh, later song credits are in the description. Uh, the sea quest monsters I face are Korotong Gol, Manticore, Golem, that one dragon, and uh, King Penguin. And here's all you need to know about them. Korotong Gol is weak to fire. I believe his condition was also to kill with fire, but he doesn't always drop it. Um, let's see here. Golem, I believe his conditional is getting him petrified. Uh, he revives himself after uh, after the first time you kill him, unless you kill him with petrification. Um, he has a counter to magic attacks. He's not a big deal. Um, the King Penguin, I think, is the third one I fight. Is it? No, the Manticore is the third one I fight. The Manticore is a has a conditional drop where you have to deal more than a certain threshold of damage at one time in order to get his conditional. Uh, I won't be able to get it for a while, but I have a creative way of getting it later, so more on him later, I suppose. Um, Fanticore. Uh, a lot of these conditional drops are not going to get until I do the post game. Um, what else? Manticore is not weak to anything. Prevent order makes him easy. Etc. Uh, also, regroup tactic. I, I don't remember when you get regroup tactic, but if you get regroup tactic before you face Manticore, you can use regroup tactic on Manticore, and it's a huge help. Um, we also get absolute zero, Aegis shield, and the, another shield. Uh, limit boost skills that are really, really good. I believe I'm using the turtle in order to reach the floating island in this section while I'm rambling. Uh, the king penguin's weak to everything. Um, uses an explosion attack after a certain amount of time, summons minions that heal him, kind of annoying. Very simple boss though, once Eric reaches 99 tech, there's a very easy way to fast kill him for money and EXP, so I'm not really super worried, I'm not really worried about it. Uh, anything else? Oh yes, the dragon from Damavand. I don't remember the Damavand dragon's name. Uh, he has three heads, you have to kill all the three heads all in the same turn, and then you can uh, smack his body around without worrying about getting destroyed by the three heads. Three he if all three heads are intact, basically he is in an all-out murder mode. Um, he's fairly easy, you need physical attackers or non-elemental magic in order to hurt him. So that's all there is to him. Um, back on to what's actually happening on the screen. We have just reached the floating island and learned about uh, learning more about the Elder Dragon and... We will learn more about that. Well, the dragon will show up again once we reach the uh, sixth bottom, so don't worry about him. You'll learn more about him. You need to beat Drake, Guirem, and the dragon in order to fight him. Uh, quick jump cut, it seems. Forget why we did this. Oh, yes. After filling in what was an A4, just kind of looking around, seeing what's there, uh, I unlocked this little scene. I don't think he gives you anything during this scene, but it's just proof that you've seen every tile. It doesn't mean you've mapped everything, it just means you've seen every tile. So, like, you can have, like, a, the most stupidest map ever, and you can still congratulate you on finding everything. Uh, what's next? A Gatanian Bacon? Okay. An important detail about this that I did not know in my first playthrough is that you don't actually need to have the fish on you in order to give it to them, which I wish I knew, but 
I didn't. So you can just give him the eel even though you don't have the eel and you win. I, something I did not think was a thing, but it is. Well, that's it for me, so enjoy your f miniature fro rush, you silly people. I'm gonna see you guys next time. Bye.